Welcome back, Natasha here. This video is all about weatherproofing and durability so you can take your project outside. When I designed the example project, my goal was to make it both durable and easy to assemble. So in this video, I wanna share why I made these choices. Then you can recreate the benefits of these materials but in your own custom LED projects. Let's talk about durability. My first question when building a project is how will the LED strip be attached to the project in a way that keeps it structurally sound? Just like we added LEDs directly to this helmet, you could also use your bike frame as your main structure by securely fastening the LEDs directly to the bike. Some LED strips do come with adhesive on the back already, but in my experience this hasn't lasted very long, especially on a vehicle. So adding zip ties or Velcro cable ties is a good idea to keep the LEDs secure. For a more structured look, you could use LED mounting tracks like this to house your LED strip and give it more structure and stability. I used these LED rope light channels for my bike that I got from my local hardware store. And since I used Velcro cable ties to hold the channels in place, I was able to bring them inside for the winter and practice writing animations for them on my wall. For more organic projects, creating structure by sewing the LEDs to clothing, attaching them to baskets, or creating shapes with sculpture wire are all fun ways to break outside the strip. So my next question was, how will I ensure that everything stays connected? The most common injury to projects like this happens when the wires tear away from either the strip or the micro bit. The solution is to secure the micro bit and LED strip really well and give the wire connections enough slack so that they don't get strained during use. And to protect any wires from getting snagged, use cable ties or tape to keep them out of the way. When planning your design, think ahead about where you'll place your micro bit and battery. You could use Velcro like the helmet project to mount the micro bit in a specific spot, or it could be as simple as placing them in a bike bag. Some are even waterproof. And that brings me to my next topic, waterproofing. As I showed in a previous video, there are two popular types of waterproof LEDs, one with a sleeve and one with a gel coating. The gel type is the kind that often comes with adhesive on the back. These strips say they're waterproof, but they aren't really yet. I mean, when you cut the sleeve, the end is open, right? So it's a good idea to seal it up. If it's the end of the strip, you can fill it in with some silicone caulk, the same stuff you use to seal your bathtub. Boop! No more water in here. The gel strips keep their covering on when you cut them. But to solder to them, you need to peel back the gel coating and remove its waterproofness. So in both cases, we need to seal the wire end back up. The best way to do this is to use heat shrink. Heat shrink is a plastic tube that shrinks when you heat it up. It creates a seal and strengthens your strip and the soldered joint. This is a good idea to do whether or not you need it to be waterproof. You can find all sorts of heat shrink, but my favorite is the clear kind. This keeps the connections visible so I can see if any of them have failed. So it makes troubleshooting easier. If the project suddenly stops working, I can just look at the connection and know why. I look for three to one heat shrink. It starts out three times larger than it becomes when it shrinks. This lets it shrink around the larger LED strip and the smaller wires. Use a heat gun or a lighter to shrink it around your connections for both durability and water resistance. For my bike build, I used a three-wire connector like this. It's waterproof and durable. Like you can't even pull it apart. But it can still be easily disconnected. So I would take this apart and bring the micro bit inside and leave the waterproof LEDs attached to my bike outside. Let's talk about the micro bit. Just like all electronics, we want to keep the micro bit away from water to prevent a short circuit when water makes an electrical connection in a place that it shouldn't. A micro bit case will help with this, but because most cases expose the edge connector, they won't be waterproof. So if you expect a chance of rain, plan to keep your micro bit in a waterproof bag or just throw a sandwich bag over it like you do with your phone at the beach. If you do get caught in the rain, remember that these are low voltage electronics, so you're safe. Just carefully pull over to a dry area, blot the electronics dry, and disconnect the battery. Don't plug the battery in again until the entire project is completely dry the next day. I've been caught in the rain with my bike several times now, and the project did make it through just fine. 
That doesn't mean that water can't hurt it, but I just wanted to let you know that it's not the end of the world if it happens to you. So, should you pour water on your micro bit? No! Should you purposefully go out in the rain just to test it? No! But if you're suddenly caught in the rain, should you panic? Also no. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to mention that these tips on durability are great for the final iteration of your project. But it's always a good idea to prototype first before spending a ton of time making it durable. Using temporary connections like alligator clips and Velcro for your first test is a great idea. My first handful of rides had only alligator clip connections, some things were taped, some things were just Velcroed. It wasn't meant to last, so it didn't have to. But once I settled on my LED placement, then I put in the work to make it durable, so I didn't have to keep fixing and rebuilding it every time I rode. Now, I've been using the same LED pixels on my bike for three years, even though the bike spent almost two years being stored completely outside, and it's still working. As you're building your project, don't forget that there's a community out there to help you. Share your ideas, questions, tips, tricks in the comments below, on the Discord channel, or in the Element 14 community. I have so much more to say about my bike build. In the next video, I'll share my project journey from idea to the full execution of my NeoPixel bike. I can't wait to tell you everything, so I'll see you there.